Hey everyone, today we're at this pond, which surprisingly is not that low for the drought we're in. Right here, you can see that there is a beaver dam against this fencing structure, but there's also a black pipe leading out to a beaver deceiver, which is not clogged. But do you know what is clogged? This culvert on the exiting end. It may not look like a big culvert to you, right? That's because of years and years of neglect. You may think that this thing might only be six feet tall, but wait until I show you the other end. It's more like 10 feet tall. Let's see if we can unblock any of this. All right, everyone, let's see if there's anything we can do about this. First, we gotta find a good way down very hot out. We got a good bit of humidity. Actual temperature in the car is reading 101. And I know that's the real air temperature because I was just moving. It's not like I was idling where it would show fake readings. So here's what we have on the other side. It's a bit stinky down here. Got the big tall boots on. It looks like that may have been one of their old solutions. See that barrel with all the holes drilled through it? But it didn't work. So here's the other end of that culvert. Look at how big that beaver dam is. Let's see if we can do anything about that. This literally smells like poop, the whole area. Wow, look at the amount of debris here. I'm already sweating and I haven't even started. That's coming from the storm drain you saw up on the sidewalk. Let's see if we can start doing anything at all before the heat gets too strong.
I'm sweating a lot. This is basically the hottest job I've ever worked on. I have to quickly go up to the street and get some water. All right, I'm heating up so bad right now.
All right, everyone, I got myself into a good working mood now. So we're gonna be able to keep going with this for a little while. So after all, yes, this culvert is this big all the way through. Those are blocks of wood. That's how they lower the pond. Yes, it is. We'll be able to get that thing flowing a bit more once the beaver dam is removed from the top. The beaver dam is only holding up maybe six inches or so. Unfortunately, I lost the cap to my water. Hopefully, I don't get too much debris in it as I'm throwing stuff over here. Pile's getting pretty big of debris. It'll be way bigger. We're going to try to remove as much as I can before I get too heat exhausted. <coughs> Got dirt in my mouth. I knew that was going to happen. <coughs> Today is a dirty job.
All right, everyone. I was gonna remove all this stuff today, but here's why we can't. There's no way I'm standing underneath this thing once I start to dig this out. Because once this thing is completely dug out, that barrier is gonna stand almost eight feet tall. Culvert is probably 10 or 12 feet. What I don't like is the bracket on this wall is sagging. I touched everything, nothing is loose, but that thing right there needs to be repaired at some point. So I'm gonna report my findings to the closest DOT office. This location here is in Maine. I'll tell them about this, and then we'll come back out here in maybe six months, see if they did anything. The remaining debris is not causing a problem. As soon as I got that stuff flowing, it started washing the muddy debris. It turned downstream dark brown, but it cleared up in only about five minutes. This water's kind of nasty. It smells like dead fish. At first, this whole pile just reeked. It's rotten wood, but it literally smelled like poop or a dead animal. It was so nasty. So we probably removed about half of the debris that was here. Now that, all eight feet of this behind those timbers is full of silt. It's right up to the top. Let me go show you. Just took my gloves off. I am actually starting to get a headache, so it's a good thing I am stopping. Even though I got my second wind in there, yeah, it's, this is how you get heat stroke. Once I got this thing flowing, there's like a nice fine mist. This actually made the area relatively cooler. Or at least it feels a lot colder since I got the water flowing. But you see there's silt filled all the way up to the top. Now look at this side. It's not in great condition, but it's holding. This side is a little bit sagged. It's forward a few inches. This side's definitely... a an inch or two lower than that side. You can tell by the flowing of the water. Now, when we go over to the other side of the road, I bet that beaver deceiver is going to have a good amount of flow going through it. So think about that. This is in 10 or even more foot culvert. But look at that. It only has about three or four feet of clearance because it's been neglected so long. And up top, look at this. This is a good example. All the road salt coming off the road. Take a look how it just destroyed the concrete compared to here. Whoa, road salt destroyed it. Probably got to the rebar which started expanding and cracking. We could have just simply picked this up and started throwing it downstream, but then it would have made a giant mess right there. And I only let debris flow downstream if I know what's down there. I'm not sure what culverts are beyond this. So, that being said, we're not gonna let a bunch of junk flow because it might plug the next culvert during a storm and cause a major flood. You never let debris flow downstream unless you know what's there. Or you know that there is nothing there, I meant to say. So we got a giant pile of debris here. That's at least, what do you guys think? It's waterlogged, which means it's full of water and if I threw it in, it would sink. It's not dry wood. Maybe a quarter ton. It's a lot of stuff there. Yes, but you see that right there. I do not believe the beaver dam at all is helping hold that. But I'm just... It's not safe working underneath that thing. Because if it was to give right now just a top timber or two, not a big deal. It may knock me over, but there's minimal risk. If the whole eight feet of that junk, which is silt, it would be like an avalanche of mud and sand and rocks on top of me. Very unlikely I would survive that. So we will report this to the DOT and we will be back on site to give it a check. Unfortunately, I... Uh, no, actually I do see it. I'm gonna have to go get that bottle cap that I lost. So this pile, it just stinks all that rotten wood. I can't wait to get back into air conditioning. It's so hot down here. All right, everyone. Just notice, I, I always go out after I do these things and people never tell me I'm covered in mud, especially on my face. It's definitely not my muddiest job, but I think it's my sweatiest. 
Just take a look at how much water we got to flow here. I'm trying to get up here on top of this so I can show you a bit. It's pretty cool. Look what they used. They used a bunch of long pieces of granite to make the bottom of this rough enough to slow it down. See the water blasting up right there? That means it's getting forced in somewhere and there might be a hollow spot. Whoa. I can't believe the neglect here. Whoever installed that stuff on the other end for the beavers, most likely fish and wildlife, should have inspected this and reported it to the DOT. Because this pile of junk here, you notice how good I was pulling it apart? A beaver dam's not supposed to pull apart that easy. This beaver dam has no new materials. I would say it's been abandoned for at least five years. It's beginning to rot. And that's why I was able to pull it apart so easily. Now, if it was a active beaver dam, I likely would have been able to oh, pull it apart with ease once I got a good amount of current going. But new construction definitely would have been stronger. This wasn't holding back as much water as you would think. Dangerously hot out. Definitely feel a lot weaker than before. Definitely. All right, we're crossing the street. It feels so nice. There's a little bit of a breeze up here. Yep, we definitely got flow here, beginning. There's a little bit coming out of the beaver deceiver. And there's a bunch coming through this beaver dam. This beaver dam also looks like it has no maintenance at all. It looks abandoned. They must have trapped and relocated the beavers because this was such a problem. It wouldn't take them long to block this whole thing up and flood the road. And look at all this elevation right here. You'd have to climb maybe another 10, 12 feet before it would start crossing the road. And this road is not designed to be a dam. That could push out the entire thing or even cause an unseen sinkhole underneath of it washing out sediment under the road. I see a painted turtle over there sunning on that rock. Cool little place. I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day. All right, so I could not find a phone number for the main DOT that is open today because it's a Saturday, but I was able to leave them a message on two of their different phone lines. So they'll definitely get a message from me. Both messages include my phone number for more information. They include the exact GPS coordinates, the name of the pond, the name of the town, and talking about if the slats of wood used to raise and lower the pond level fail, it's going to unleash about 8 or 10 feet of sand, muck, and water. That could cause a major problem downstream if they don't get to it as soon as possible. So we'll see what they do from that phone call. Thanks for watching.